Um, I'm grateful for this opportunity to address you and to attend the conference. Um, uh, as Kat said, uh, the, our topic was pretty broad, so I'm going to go another different um, direction. Um, I've been fascinated in the last couple years with the work of um, Brian Grimm and some others, um, for example, the Religious Freedom and Business Foundation um, that has been investigating the relationship between um, religious freedom and economics, um, which is basically the theme of the conference as well. Um, so they have been doing research about um, how uh, greater or greater religious freedom um, tends toward greater economic pros prosperity in different countries. Um, so the thesis of my short comments, and they are going to be short, um, is to point out that um, the relationship is reciprocal um, and that we also need to consider the other direction, that not only do, does greater religious freedom affect um, economics in important and real ways, but that economics also affects religious freedom in important and real ways. And um, to, to kind of support my thesis, um, I'm just going to give some um, anecdotal uh, accounts kind of from my time here in Turkey. So it's kind of a case, using case, uh, Turkey as a case study um, and sharing some of my own experiences as a American in Turkey observing from an outside perspective. Um, so to start off, uh, I think it's also interesting to um, point out when we're looking at Turkey, um, when the Turkish Republic was founded in uh, 1923, I, th I think that uh, a large part of the, the reason for um, creating the secular um, society was for the purpose of modernization. I, actually, I don't think that. I think that's pretty well accepted, um, that uh, Ataturk um, wanted to improve the, let's say, economic status, the modern the modern, modernity of the country. And for that reason, he um, imposed um, more secular um, more secular laws, restrictions, trying to change the character of, of the nation so that Turkey, though it's Muslim majority, um, is a secular nation. But um, I want to read part of the Turkish constitution um, to kind of point out that it's a kind of a, a perfect model of um, a perfect statement of religious freedom. And uh, in international human rights law, it, would, it could be called a perfect model. So it says, everyone has the right to freedom of conscience, religious belief, and conviction. Acts of worship, religious services, and ceremonies shall be conducted freely, provided that they do not violate the provisions of Article 14, which is the article I'm reading. Um, no one shall be compelled to worship or to participate in religious ceremonies and rites to reveal religious beliefs and convictions or be blamed or accused because of his religious beliefs and convictions. It goes on. Um, but just to show again, uh, it in the text or in the words, it sounds like perfect model for religious freedom. But in reality, it doesn't always play out that way. And so I'd like to just give a couple examples, a couple of uh, anecdotes from uh, my experience talking to people living in Turkey about how the experience actually plays out. So I live currently in um, Gaziantep, Turkey. I'm a teacher in the city. Um, Gaziantep is kind of, it's in southeast Turkey, kind of border between more conservative southeast and, and more westernized west of Turkey. Um, and so some of the people I've uh, become acquainted with have shared some interesting stories with me. So for example, um, a couple of weeks ago I was speaking with a fellow professor at my university who was raised uh, Muslim, a very devout Muslim, but during his university education, he decided that he no longer believed in God. He became an atheist. Um, but he told me as we were talking that uh, 
he could tell me because I was American, but um, he's unable to disclose to anybody um, professionally, in his professional life especially, uh, his religious convictions. He can't tell anybody that he's an atheist because if he did, um, he would lose, he feels at least that he would lose his job on the spot. So um, though there's religious freedom in word, like I said, I'm trying to point out that uh, economic pressures, his personal um, need and desire to have uh, a way to take care of himself and his family um, affects his religious choices. Um, another example, I am acquainted with a family who uh, has been Jewish for several generations. However, uh, on their personal identity cards, uh, which they carry, everyone carries, they list themselves as Muslim. Uh, why do they do that? Um, they told me because of the social and economic repercussions that they would suffer if they listed their, relig their true religion. Um, and I think this is something that happens a lot. I've heard people say, um, though, Turkey is reported to be 99% Muslim. Nobody really knows how many Muslims there are because so many people will um, they'll say that they're Muslim on their identity cards because they're afraid <coughs> of um, what might happen otherwise. Uh, and a further example, I, so I teach, as I said, and I have students approach me on occasion. I've had a handful of students um, come to me and ask me if I can tell them about my religion or tell them, teach them about religion bro more broadly. They have not heard about um, many religions outside of um, their own Islamic faith. Um, and so I've uh, on occasion met with students and tried to kind of explain a little bit about history of religion and, and things. Uh, one particular instance the student, um, I offered him some uh, literature, but he told me that he couldn't take any literature. He couldn't um, take it back to his dorm room because he uh, felt that um, he was at risk of uh, somebody finding the literature, somebody coming in and searching and finding it, and that he uh, would suffer both uh, social ostracization as well as um, here he was at a university trying to get a medical degree, um, improve his social status and his economic um, power, um, but he felt like that he would suf suffer um, some negative repercussions if anybody ever found out that he was trying to learn about other religions. Um, Probably give a few more examples, but I think uh, I think I made made the point perhaps. Um, but again, I just um, think it's important that when we're considering how to improve religious freedom, um, we have to consider some of the the economic effects or the economic pressures that are also influencing people, not just the law, and uh, how to how to do that. Um, I'm not going to attempt to explain. Um, I'm just raising the question. Um, in the in the U.S., I guess one of the ways that we deal with it clearly is through anti-discrimination laws. I've been helping um, write er, and edit a treatise for the past few years about religion and law in the United States, and a large portion of the cases that um, are heard in the United States concerning religion involve um, Employment law, discrimi empl employment, discrimi employment discrimination, and all kinds of employment issues. Um, so, um, yeah. So I think uh, thank you, and I'm happy to take your questions.